الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise and thanks belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala May the peace and blessing of Allah be upon his servant and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam As so follows my dear respected brothers in Islam We'll discuss a short hadith related to Ad-Iyatul Istiftah so we're all familiar that one of the sunan of the prayers, one of the recommended acts of the prayers is that when the person stands for as salat and he makes a takbir, he enters as salat with Allahu Akbar, there is a moment in which you're supposed to say a dua or make a dhikr before you begin to recite Surah Al-Fatiha. That there, that moment there is called Dua al-Istiftah, the opening Dua for as salat And there are many narrations of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam concerning what to say during this time. And one of them, this is one of the, the famous uh, of those ad'iyah, is what Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrated when the narration is found in Sahih al-Bukhari, in where he observed and realized that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would remain silent after at takbir and before reading Surah Al-Fatiha. So after the Salat of that day, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, considering who he is from among the Sahaba and his uh, concern for seeking knowledge and his passion for that, he asked the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Bi abi anta wa ummi ya Rasulullah iskatatuka bayna at-takbiri wal qira'ati ma taqul. He said, My mother and my father sacrifice themselves, or I sacrifice them for you. What do you say between at-takbir and Surah Al-Fatiha? There's a iskata there, there's a, there's a pause. A silence that we observe. What are you saying at that moment? For Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in this particular hadith, he said, I say, Allahumma ba'id bayni wa bayna khatayai, kama ba'adta bayna al-mashriq wa al-maghrib. Allahumma naqini min al-khataya, kama yunaqqa al-thawb al-abiyadu min al-danas. Allahumma ghsilni min khatayaya bil-ma'i wa al-thalj wa al-barad. This is the entire dua that he says this is dua al-istiftah but it is very powerful and it is very important we need to memorize it and most importantly we need to understand what we're saying when you understand it you're motivated to continue to say it as opposed to the common and normal one that people yani, tend to always um, recite and that is subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik wa tabarak asmuka wa ta'ala jadduka wa la ilaha ghayruk that's the common one but this is as important and as powerful and there is it, it is shaping the attitude of a believer in terms of our relationship with sins and how it's supposed to be so very quickly we'll explain this dhikr we'll explain this dua and then upon you is to memorize it and most importantly to continue understanding this dhikr this dua it's made up of three parts the first part you're saying Allahumma ba'id bayni wa bayna khatayai that's the first one. The first part you're saying, Oh Allah, make a distance between me and sins in the same manner you have made a distance between the East and the West. And you know where the East is and where the West is. And it takes the sun from when it rises from the East all the way until it sits in the West. It's a very long time and a very long distance between the East and the West. This is our attitude towards sins. You're asking Allah Azza wa Jal to make a distance between you and sins, like the distance between the East and the West. And here, Ba'id Bayni wa Bayna Khatayai can refer to two things. It can refer to the past sins that you have done, and it can also refer to the future sins that have been decreed for a person to do. Your attitude is to ask Allah Azza wa Jal, and look at this, is a dua in as salat So now you've stood, you've stood between the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And you know, you are acknowledging at this moment that the biggest obstacle and the barrier between you and Allah جل, are the sins. So now you are begging Allah جل, to remove these sins away so that you can have a path to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you're asking to distance, keep me away. And just like it's impossible for the East to get to the West, it's impossible for them to get together. Don't join me and my sin. The future sins, I don't want anything to do with them. Keep me away from them. And the past sins also, I don't want anything to do with them. Keep them distance away from me. And this is how the people's attitude would be on the day of judgment as well. Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "يَوْمَ تَجِدُ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ مُحْضَرَةٍ وَمَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ سُوءٍ تَوَدُّ لَوْ أَنَّ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَهُ أَمَدًا بَعِيدًا." Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "On the day of judgment, when the good is brought before the people and they see their good, and then their bad, وَمَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ سُوءٍ the evil and the bad that a person did, when it is displayed before him, he would wish, he would desire." لو أن بينها وبينه أمدا بعيدا، he would desire had there been between him and his sins a very far distance، أمدا بعيدا، a very far distance. then no one wants to see sins. the consequence of sins is horrible. the consequence of sins is evil. so the very first thing of this du'a، you're asking Allah عز وجل to make a distance between you. And sins make them impossible that I ever reach them. Ubaid baini wa baina khatayay as well would refer to make a distance between me and places of sins, because on earth there are places of worship, and there are also places of sins. There are places of corruption, places of sins, places where a zina is practiced, al khamar is practiced, al riba is practiced, and so on. For baid, keep me away from these places. The further away you're from a place of sin, the less likely you would fall into a sin. And how does a person distance himself from sins? And this is what you're asking Allah in the very beginning of this du'a. But then to answer the question, how does a person make this a reality? How do you make it a possibility that you keep away from sin and you're distanced from sin? Very simple. That you introduce good deeds in your life. Then the one who is busy and occupied with doing righteous good deeds doesn't have time for sins. Then imagine now, and then you plan out your week. Monday we're fasting. Thursday we're fasting. In the mornings of every day, I sit down 20 minutes reading Afghar al-Sabah. By then, I engage in memorizing some Quran, reading Quran. Imagine, and then you're memorizing an hour a day. Then we're revising some Quran. By then, Adhkar, being aware of Allah Azza wa Jal during the day, being mindful of Allah Azza wa Jal during the day, during the night, attending Al Masajid when possible, attending the lessons when possible. And if your if your schedule is filled like this, oh, where is where is the time to to commit a sin? Mawafi, there's no more time. Well, when why do people commit sin? Because their life is emptied from righteous deeds. He hasn't filled it up with the good. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, when He praised the believers, He said, "Wa yadraoon bi siyat al hasana, wa yadraoon bi siyat al hasana." They push away the bad with good. When good and righteous deeds are involved in your life, that naturally and automatically pushes away the bad. There's no more time for it. There's no energy for it because you've exhausted yourself in the worship of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Very simple. If a want, if a person, يعني, has a desire and a temptation for sins, perhaps look into your weekly schedule. What righteous deeds have you introduced in it? Wallah, is it we're just sitting on the basics, on the very basic al faraid or alhamdulillah? Yeah, you need to introduce more, so that you're always in this path of goodness, and you make sure you keep away the bad from your life. Now, then this is the idea of how. To keep a distance between you and sins, introduce goodness into your life. So the first part, Allah ma'bad baini wa baina khatayay, kama ba'at ta baina al-mashriq wa al-maghrib. The second part, Allahumma naqini min al-khataya, kama yunqa thub al-abyad min al-dhanas. You're asking now Allah Azza wa Jalla to clean you, 
and to purify you from your sins in the same manner clothe, white cloth is cleansed from dirt this second part of the dua now you're asking Allah Azza wa Jal to wipe away the sin to wipe away the sin that has been recorded in your record and in your book wipe it away remove it and if it's removed that means you are not questioned about it on the day of judgment so this is the second part and we're asking Allah Azza wa Jal to purify and clean us from the sins in the same manner white clothing is cleansed from the dirt that's on it and why was this similarity made as though we're being taught and this is the case that the heart is white just like white clothing that's the heart and uh, with every sin it begins to get dirty with every sin this white heart begins to get dirty and it continues to get black until the heart dies if the heart dies the sign of that is that a person cannot can no longer recognize the good for what it is and he can no longer condemn the evil the evil becomes good in his eye and the good becomes something condemned in his life if a person reaches that stage his heart is completely back it has died as the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions so here at the beginning of a salat in the second part of this dua we're making sure that our heart is always white because if it's crystal clean and polished the heart is alive it loves what Allah loves and it will hate and be uh, displeased with anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates the heart is still alive it's in good condition so that's the second part you ask Allah Azza wa Jal to cleanse the sin acknowledging that if my heart kept going in this state of black 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 dots on it it's gonna die I'll be in ruins that's the second part of the dua and then the final and the third part and this is very important listen to this we're concluding with it we say Allahumma ghsil khatayaya bil ma'i wa thalji wal barad oh Allah wash away my sins with water snow and ice here, al-ulama rahimahumullah, they say that the last part of the dua is referring to the consequences of sins. Listen, pay attention. When you do a sin, the sin has a consequence. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ Any calamity that strikes you is because of what your hands committed. Whatever sin you do, that leads to a consequence. There are some sins that can really cause depression. There are some sins that can really cause uh, forgetfulness of knowledge. That's the consequence of a, a specific type of sin. There are sins that can cause a person to be humiliated among the people, like a zina. A zina, one of its consequences is that a person is humiliated among the people. There are sins that can cause a bone to be broken in your body. There are sins that can cause a loss of wealth. We don't know. And then you have no clue. But sins have consequences. So the second part of the dua, you're asking Allah to wipe away the sin, not necessarily the consequence. The last part of the dua, you're asking Allah Azza wa Jal, alongside the removal of the sin itself also wipe away its consequence i don't want to suffer its consequence and there is could be the case that the sin is forgiven but the consequence remains with you allahu a'lam for how long in this dua you're focused and you're asking allah not only to remove the sin but also whatever consequence it was going to lead me to if this kind of sin was going to result in a forgetfulness of knowledge, then oh Allah, don't allow this calamity to happen. And bring back this knowledge that I would have forgotten if I had earned the consequence of that sin. Or ward away from me calamities and evils that would have harmed me and my wealth and my family had you not removed the consequence of the sin. 
So that's the last part. Asking Allah Azza wa to remove the consequence of the sin. Allahumma ghsil. Wash it. Remove it. Ighsil. Khatayay. Bil ma'i wa thalji wal barad. With water, snow and ice. Finally here, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he says, why was this mentioned? Water, snow and ice. He said, this is a reference to the fact that sins have heat to them. They have fire to them. And that's true. Lan al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in other hadith, he said that a sadaqa tutfi'u al khati'a kama yutfi'u al ma'u al nar. That the good, the, the sadaqa, it extinguishes the sin. Look at the word, extinguishes the sin. In the same manner, water extinguishes fire. Sins have heat to them. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, تَحْتَرِقُونَ تَحْتَرِقُونَ فَإِذَا صَلَّيْتُمُ الظُّهْرَ غَسَلَتْهَا ثُمَّ تَحْتَرِقُونَ تَحْتَرِقُونَ فَإِذَا صَلَّيْتُمُ الظُّهْرَ غَسَلَتْهَا Until he mentioned all the prayers. He said, you're on fire, you're on fire. People are walking around, they're on fire. And when you pray al that Salat al washes away the fire. It extinguishes the state of fire you're in. The sins that you had committed between Al-Fajr and Dhuhr. And then you burn once again and you continue to burn. Then when you pray Al-Asr, it washes the sins that were committed between al dhuhr and Al-Asr. And so the idea is that you as a believer, your attitude towards sin should be the same attitude you will have had you seen actual fire on yourself. What would you do if you saw fire on yourself? You'd, run, you'd go crazy. You'd rush. You'd go to find some water to turn it off. People that, يعني, perhaps you've seen clips of people, uh, petrol was يعني, thrown on them and they were ignited. Running around, left and right, trying to look for water. People coming, trying to turn him off. That's in the real world because you can see the fire. But in the spiritual world, that's the attitude that is supposed to be with a believer concerning his sins. Rush! Heck, there needs to be urgency to turn it off. There needs to be urgency to rush to the forgiveness of Allah Azza wa Jal and repenting to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. For imagine this dua al istiftah, you're saying it five times a day in your salawat. Allah, the sunnah, of course, is to mix it around. There's about eight, nine, or ten that have been narrated by Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's good to go through them to understand what they are and then to mix them around in your salawat and bring them يعني, so that you can apply the sunnah in your life. But this one here is very important. Memorize it. Memorize it. Really, because if you don't memorize it or don't make an effort to memorize it, يعني, what is it? What are you going to memorize? Khalas, you're going to live your life until you die. Not coming near this sunnah at all in your life sounds very scary. If, uh, make an effort and memorize. And of course, here, yani, this is a sunnah. If we're speaking about the ruling, it doesn't nullify the prayer if a person did not uh, recite it. But you know, we said that sunnah and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do not avoid it. Get busy with a sunnah. You see, now if you go, you take some time to memorize it and then to revise it, you're engaged in a righteous deed. You're not thinking of sins. Sins are being turned away from you at that time. And this is how a person continues to protect himself. Wallahu alam, we ask Allah Azza wa to grant us goodness and success in this life and in the afterlife. We ask Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us and to forgive our sins and our shortcomings. Inna huwa liyudhalika wal qadir wa alayhi wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi.